Hey everybody, Jay Krista, Say I Do Forever. It's Book Friday, and we're talking waffles and spaghetti. Right yeah. there. And this is an in interesting chapter. This chapter talks about relaxing, but Krista and I are on the uh, um, point of view of there wasn't a lot of relaxing. I feel like it's more about uh, how men and women handle stress. Yeah, and anxiety and depression. Yeah, I didn't feel like I was I was all ready for I had my, you know, little umbrella drink. I was all ready for a vacation. <laughs> I was so excited. It says remote places and remote controls and I thought, well, it's how we relax and how we I, set apart. I wasn't relaxed reading this chapter. <laughs> it was about how men and women process stress. Right. And yes, in the end, it did have a lot of options for relaxing and getting away to alleviate that stress. So Yeah, but the whole chapter wasn't about relaxing. That's they, true. They, they portrayed the chapter differently than it actually ended up being. Yes, it was saying. a bait and switch. It was. <laughs> I, it actually was. I was ready with my umbrella drink, and I ended up getting a stress lesson and depression lesson. So, but it was really, really good. So I am going to say I really like this chapter because it brought up how we process stress different. Yeah, that's true. Like, um, you know, her first thing right off the gate was talking about her grandparents. Um, so Pam, that, yeah. uh, the gal yeah. who wrote this book with her With her husband. husband um, her grandparents and how they would get into kind of a argument or a fighting match. And right. um, the husband would go off or her grandpa... The grand grandfather would go off into his workshop and he'd tinker. And the grandmother would get in the kitchen and start cleaning and baking up a storm, or cooking up a storm. Cooking while she called deal people with her to call, you know, to yeah. talk about it and everything. And so yep. I thought that was really, really good because it is true. Like the moment stress hits, um, for me, I can't sit down and relax. And I have to start pacing. I've got to go into the kitchen and clean. I've got to start. I do. I start polishing things, dusting things. Have you ever noticed that? I notice that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're stressed, what do you do? Uh, disappear. I go work in my shed or I go work on a project or I play ps3 or whatever i get into a box where it's just mm -hmm. it's kind of like i isolate myself because i don't want to think about the issue at that point in time mm -hmm. and then once i had time to go away then i'm ready to come back and let's let's figure out a solution well and ironically this chapter actually goes through those exact differences right so it says when uh stress hits home or hits Women need to traverse across all those noodles and emotionally connect to the people and situations connected to the problem at hand. In other words, okay, I am super stressed. We got to figure this out. We got to come up with a solution. So they got to bring in all the people. They've got to interview the people. They got to talk through everything. They've got to talk through like, what are some scenarios? How can we get out of this mess? How do we fix it? How do we heal from this? And the men, um, it said... They go to a neutral box. Men, on the other hand, in times of stress, retreat to easy boxes. Yep, a neutral um, box. Every man has a certain box in his life that are much easier on him emotionally than others. When he enters these boxes, life melts away and he has the opportunity to recharge. Yep. That key, recharge, so usually... I get upset when you retreat to one of those boxes, like playing a video game, watching a, watching something on or TV. Or just disappear out to the shed, Or too. disappearing. Yeah. I think, are you kidding me? Here we have a crisis, and you are playing. How can you relax at this moment? <laughs> it's just how I deal with it. Isn't that weird? It's just how I deal with it. And it's good to know that it's not just you and not just me. Right. You know, how I deal with it is we want to, we got to go through it. We got to figure this all out. Right. You I gotta, like to dive in right away and, and come up with a solution to the problem. And you like to explore every single avenue, mm -hmm. every single spaghetti noodle. And I'm over here in this other box going, I'll be right with you. And I'm over there, like, you know, she was talking about banging pans and throwing oh, things, trying to get 
the husband to to get his attention just come say are you okay or <laughs> gee what gave you that idea was it the pants flying across the kitchen <laughs> what? are you not listening to me you yeah, know um, obviously not and meanwhile you know the husband goes and takes a nap or have you guys <laughs> ever been in a fight and I mean if we get in a fight in the evening I lay there thinking about it and I want to talk it through and Jay's like he's snoring yeah good night <laughs> Does he does he not Good care night. about this situation? Well, I'm snoring going to sleep because I'm thinking about it in my in my sleep pattern. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that and then wake mean? up with the answer. Yeah. You figure go to sleep. You want to get it done recharge. before you sleep. Yeah. But what a That's huge why our our uh what do you want to call it? Differences are so different. Mm -hmm. We handle things different ways. Yeah. And if you aren't aware of that, that other married couples are going through that, you feel like you're alone. Yeah. Um, I think early on in the stages, and I've heard this from other women, they're like, I married the wrong guy. He doesn't care. You know what? You married a human and you married a man. It's not that, we, <laughs> it's not that we don't care. It's that we deal with, mm -hmm. we deal with things differently yeah. than women do. So... And that's okay. Well, and then it had some interesting kind of statistics on um, women um, because they're in tune with their emotions and rational nuances of life. They report more anxiety overall. It is generally well known in clinical dom domain that post-adolescent females suffer a higher incidence of depression than their male counterparts. And it goes on to talk about um, women have a higher anxiety levels, um, more panic attacks um, than their male counterparts. And um, they also produce lower levels of serotonin in their bodies, which raises their genetic vulnerability to depression. So you know, the man is who's married to kind of an emotional woman is going, What's wrong with her, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your what's your take on? I, I think we have to take our wives, um, and accept your spouse where they're at. You can't just like for a guy, he can't just say, "Well, why don't you hop into your own box and I'll deal with it later." That's not how it works. Um, your wife has to process things the way she is wired her dna the way you are the way god made you mm -hmm. you have to work through and process things how god made you i have to process things the way he made me um, the minute we try to conform the other one to how the other one processes mm -hmm. it's going to be the fourth of july and it's going to be that way every time couples need to realize that they have to just let their spouse deal with it and then after things cool down, come together and then talk about it and come up with a resolution for the problem. Exactly. That's and what they need to do. They actually had, which I was real excited, they had kind of a four-step process or things to do for the man. It says oh, this is funny. to deliberately help your wife talk things out. And they have actually four, four easy steps, gen gentlemen. Number one. Offer to listen. Listening is really important. She might just need to talk it through, work it through. You don't even have to come up with the answers. She just needs you to um, listen. Listen. And then number two is to touch her, like reach out and, you know, it's going to be okay. Okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> you know, just touch her hand, her shoulder, give her a hug, let her cry into your shoulder, whatever's going on. Number three, offer help. So maybe if she's frustrated with the house, maybe have you and the kids or you kind of, well, can I help you clean up? You know, let's uh, vacuum and let's get things organized and clean. And what else can I help with? That How usually makes you happy. Yeah, it makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because when there's so much emotional uh, things going on, then you need, um, I don't know, the clean house helps. Well, so, so with her, when there's a lot going on in our lives, like there currently has been if 
things aren't clean or if the vacuuming hasn't happened, it just compounds that. It, it makes just, everything else feel fuzzy too. It it or just my makes emotions it emotions are cluttered. The house is cluttered. It even just makes it more overwhelming for you. Yeah. So if I jump in and vacuum and clean the kitchen, then I can sit and worry. Do the laundry in a clean house. Exactly. <laughs> well, and you have more. <laughs> the best part is you have more um, opportunity mm -hmm. to focus more on that than that and the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I eliminate some of the... Pressure. Well, it, it's it's not even an issue. It's just the other stuff. There's more stuff. If I remove some of the stuff, then that gives you an opportunity to focus on what you really want to problem solve instead of mm -hmm. the problem at hand and all of this. It just makes it more of a mountain instead mm -hmm. of a hill. Yeah. And then number four... It says, men, to help your wives, um, own up to it. So if you are the problem, and, you know, because you broke a promise or you dropped the ball on responsibility, say you're sorry and make it up to her. Um, you know, so it's really nice and neat. Men have this great four It's a four-point step. step. And yeah. then I was sitting here taking notes while we were reading this, and I was waiting for women to have our four steps. <laughs> she gives a couple paragraphs and nothing. I'm like, it's just um, deliberately encourage your husband to spend time in easy boxes. So she created it as a story. It's <laughs> perfect for her. She can just read it. She can attach the emotions to yep. it. She can be in the story. Where for guys, it's just like, okay, here's the four points. Okay, I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, it goes into paragraph after paragraph of what we can do to help men. But boiling it down, which I, I thought was funny, is like, how do they get like a four-step, okay, check, check, That's, that's because, check. you know why? It's because that's four boxes. <laughs> four boxes that they can do. Exactly. <laughs> and the women, this is a bunch of noodles. That's noodles. That's mess. That's oh. <laughs> all over the place. So to boil it down. It's like a novel for you guys. <laughs> Um, women, we can help our man if we encourage, like if you see that your spouse is really, really stressed out, encourage them to go ahead and go spend some time in one of those easy boxes, you know, um, go play some, you know, uh, video games or, you know, go out to the garage and tinker, um, go watch a sports game and just let them enjoy, let right. them enjoy that quiet box because I think the word a couple page earlier, recharge, that's what hit me. It's like that's what men are doing after they're super stressed is they're doing these easy boxes to recharge. Right. Well, what happens, it's a benefit for you ladies, once they recharged, then they can help you. <laughs> right. Because, but if we attack them and want them to go through our you know, healing process right. when they hadn't recharged. So maybe let them recharge first. And then men, after you've recharged, come and, and help the women. <laughs> I was just thinking, we need to be recharged because we have to have enough energy to listen to the story that we're about to hear about what's going on in your life that you're thinking about. The stresses of the children, the finances, the, you know... The things you're working on mm -hmm. or whatever so we have to recharge so yeah. i can have so that it's energy in our, it's in our best interest ladies to let him recharge before he comes yeah back. because <laughs> if you don't you're going to get this is there a point to this story <laughs> i hear that often <laughs> that's what it's going to be so uh, what, if you let the husbands recharge then yeah. we're going to have all the energy and time yep. to listen and one says you know take a step back right so you know a Allow your husband to cool off and recharge, and you take a step back so that you can process some things without, you know, spewing it all. Right. Um, and then they go through a whole series. Um, if you need ideas for getaways, if you need ideas for a day away, a moment away, it's like page after page of ideas of, you know, the R and R getaway, the great getaway, the planning the getaway. They've got the play and getaway. pray, set a date and delegate, um, first things, I mean, they just got the surprise getaway. They even have how to kidnap your spouse. <laughs> um, <laughs> and take them on a surprise getaway. 
Yeah. You know? And so, yes, the chapter is about getaways and, um, and you know, vacations. Just so you can kind of do a, a, what's it called, a... Uh, like you re, recharge. Reset or recharge. recharge. Yeah, recharge. That's yeah. a good way and to that is it. so, so important. So I know that they, you know, put a lot into this chapter on that because it seems like um, if you can get away for a moment and work through the stress, you guys can conquer anything. Right. You know, a lot of couples have to go through some pretty big things. They have a story in here about a gentleman who fell off scaffolding. It all broke, and he went through years of... of yeah, lots of back surgeries. Back surgeries and he, stuff. He was in construction, and he fell um, really far. And mm -hmm. there was rebar down the bottom, and he fell between the rebar. Obviously, God was watching over him for sure but um he fell and then he went through all these surgeries and then of course the insurances the different insurances they were arguing who's not going to pay who's going to pay and then he had to fight all that and then that was more stresses on him and his wife so through all of it they came out on the other side and they rededicated themselves to god and mm -hmm. to their marriage and to each other um so it was a good ending to a very insane intense story yeah and maybe you guys have a story like that yeah or maybe you're newly wet newlyweds or newly married and you need to know that stresses will happen in life yeah so learning um some of these coping skills and learning how um your husband uh processes stress and how you process stress and maybe talking about that and yeah. then um, the thing, you know, last week we talked about conversation and taking turns. Mm -hmm. They use that word again this in this one, taking turns. When one of you is strong and the other one is weak and maybe really stressed out, then take turns saying, oh, are you stressed? Maybe we need yeah. to do a little getaway to get you in a relaxing box. Right. And then for the husbands, oh, you're stressed? You know what? Let's go take a walk and let's talk through this. Right. Um, it's taking turns and helping each other process things and learning um, how each other works. Right. And, you know, a lot of this is men, women, but sometimes there's even personality differences sure. and um, just differences in each of each couple. So good conversation and learning each other's ways um, I was thinking this whole thing kind of brought up a couple of our different, we have a lot of different really severe stress situations, but one was... We do? <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, one was taking our daughter to college. That was a stressor. We yeah. had to drive her 10 hours and drop her off. And both of us thought we were doing pretty good until they made us say goodbye. And then I thought I had no problem with it. I wasn't going to be emotional. And it hit me like it just kind of came on me. And I almost couldn't get to the car fast enough without the tears just bursting out. And then yeah. I proceeded in the car to cry for like four hours straight as it we were supposed to be. It was the longest drive home I've ever experienced. <laughs> long drive i mean and we're not talking just crying we're talking like like can't catch my breath and of course crying. i was had a fear of oh my god we just dropped our daughter off so far away from home and then dad obviously me being the dad i wasn't there to protect my daughter uh from anything happening because even though she's college age she's still mm -hmm. my little girl and so then I turned that into anger and, and just frustration and fear. And so that didn't help with the drive home. Because then he was yelling at me for crying. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I didn't need to yell at her for crying, but I was just frustrated. Which made me and cry I was, more. <laughs> and I was fearful for our daughter because we didn't know anything about this school where we just dropped her off. It was just a disaster mess. But anyway, we got through it mm -hmm. eventually. But... We um, learned how we <clears throat> process fear and stress right and um now when he gets real angry about something i think you know is he feeling some fear or some worry about it because he's just getting kind of angry and now he knows when i blubber and cry that it could be that i'm just worried and fearful 
you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, learning these things about each other and and getting through it, you know, um, life isn't pretty all the time. Mm-mm. <laughs> but you can take vacations. And see, I now wish I had my umbrella drink <laughs> so that I can get rid of the stress from this chapter. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, to remember is, you know, a lot of couples will say, well, we don't have any money to go anywhere. Well, you don't have to have a lot of money to go anywhere. You can still go on a trip like mm-hmm. Krista and I do when we do our videos of going to South, the South Hills or Sun Valley or whatever. You know, it's a little bit of gas to get up there and a little back, but it still lets us sit by the river and listen to the water and decompress, de-stress, and just, you know, recoup and just come back together and talk about things while we're sitting by the water because it's relaxing by the water. So you can do a lot of things that are free. Um, You know, you can drive to a park and just hang out or you can drive to a place like the mountains or the river or whatever. Yeah. Um, There's always, or the beach, if you live, you know, somewhere where there's ocean. But there's always something you can do for free, pretty much for free. You don't have to go on an all expenses paid, you know, via a visa card to wherever, some big resort and spend thousands of dollars because you need a couple nights away. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. There's always other things. Yeah, you can definitely do that. (coughs) I mean, you could even, just getting away, period, just leaving your property and going to go on a walk we have a college near us that's really really nice that we can go on a walk with and so just something like that it's simple but yet it lets you get out and it lets Mm -hmm. you spend time together and discuss things i mean it's amazing the things that we can discuss and come to agreement on with just a walk yeah so so the point is Learn each other's ways of, you know, decompressing from stress. Take turns and take care of each other's needs. And communicating. Communicate and take some time to get away to, um, you know, just refresh. And it it clears your mind a little bit, makes you think a little bit easier. For sure. So, well, that was Chapter 3. In Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti by Bill and Pam Farrell. And we hope you join us next week for yeah. Chapter 4. I hope we get to go on a vacation. It should be a fun chapter. <laughs> anyway, till next time, Jay Krista, say you forever. Happy Friday. Till Love next time, guys. guys. See ya. <laughs>